Hey everyone, this is Tony. I'm the Dungeon Master of the campaign, and with me today are the following players. Hi, I'm Bethany, and I'll be playing Belinda Walsingham, the Half-Elf Awakened Mystic. Hi, this is Adam, and I will be playing Akiva Kanchu, the Shadar Kai Hexblade Warlock. Hi, I'm Jane, and I'm playing Nissa Turin, the Gnome Arcane Trickster Rogue. Hi, I'm Mike, and I'm playing Scribner Shannon Whitecliffe, the Human Rogue Fighter. Next week, we'll be Rumble Squad, Episode 2-5. Join us now for Sharp and Quill, Episode 9. Welcome to Ashmelin. Last time, the party speak with Thoven Arborshade and inform him of what they've learned from the books obtained in the Library of Tenebris, and the various locations pointed out that were a part of the Zumyar Empire. Thoven fills them in with his own knowledge before promising to send them to Solana in order to look more into one of the places marked on Tenebris' map, the Temple of the Prime. As the party finish their final business in Orenthal, they prepare to meet Thoven the next day, as they head out to Solana. So the next morning, after a long rest, you were told to meet by the southwestern gate, if you want to meet up with Thoven in the morning, so get some breakfast, head out, and you arrive at the gate where you see Thoven's waiting to essentially walk out. Is he, like, just standing there as Thoven Arborshade, or...? Ah, uh, he is wearing a more, like, kind of everyday cloak and hood. He is wearing his... Mask gets a few looks from some people, but overall doesn't get swarmed. As he waits, he does notice you and kind of just gestures and walks over to you. Hello. Are you prepared to leave? Yes, we are. When you exit out of the city, past the milling people who are waiting to get in, travel for a little ways. Thoven seems to kind of be aware of where the various arcane barriers are for teleportation. And he, after a little while, starts to turn down a little bit of a side road to get out of the main pathway as people continue to travel in and out of Orenthal, so that you have a little bit of seclusion as he is about to do a teleportation circle. Gets out some of his equipment. Any final things before I start? Because when I begin it, in one minute, the portal will open and you will all travel through and find yourselves in Ashmelon. Where exactly in Ashmelon? Like, what should we expect to see on the other side? You'll be in a small domed room. That's where their sigil sequence will take you. They will have a few guards there just to make sure you're not bringing anything unwarranted into the city. It's normal inspection. Oh, of course. Did we need to have papers or something to go into another country? I didn't think of that until just now. I assume you have your papers on you. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. In either case, they will have some ready for you as guests of Solana. So, Great. Any final questions before I begin? No, I think we're ready to go. As Thovin finishes the sigil sequence, you see in the air before you a shimmering portal appear, and he just says, go. I enter first. I assume all of you enter, and as you step through, you find yourselves in a small circular room. Enough room that as you kind of step out, you move to the side for your fellow party members to simply appear in the space. But even... As you look back, there's nothing there. It's just you appear. It seems like literally you are stepping out of air as there's a brief sensation of like you're feeling yourselves be pulled as if you're moving at intense speeds before you suddenly step out. Magic is wild. As you guys step out into this small circular room, there's a doorway, but no actual door that seems to open up into this almost white marble path. And as you kind of step out, you notice two elves on either side, outside of the entranceway, that seem a little surprised to see people arriving. But that kind of turns back to normal as they pull out a couple of wands. We will be inspecting you. By what means did you arrive? One of you cast the teleportation circle, yes? No, no, a friend did for us. Ah, do you have papers in your possession? Oh, of course. And... One of them will flick the wand, and you see kind of his eyes glow for a brief moment as he kind of just looks everything over and looks at you, starts to flip through the papers, and just says, well, welcome to 
Ashmalin, please. And they will direct you forward, where as you step out of the building, you notice the city itself is situated against the side of a large cliff. At this point, as you step out, sound seems to fill the air as you hear waves crashing somewhere below you, as the city seems to overlook this ocean. The construction of the city seems to display skill that the elven architects possess with magic. Scanning the scene from side to side, it looks like the place is literally emerging from the cliff wall behind it. Dark gray stones slowly change into smooth white marble walkways that stretch towards the dome building that you are currently exiting from. The marble continues on ahead of you to large open air buildings that stretch upwards for hundreds of feet. Your eyes continue to travel to several small waterfalls that cascade between the buildings and floating walkways that you noticed amongst the various structures that spiral slowly upwards. And towards the base of the cliff far below, as you notice water softly crashing against the rocks. And while predominantly elvish people are walking about, there are a few humans, several gnomes, but there is an air here of just peace and calm and a patience to the air as everyone just kind of walks slowly from place to place and seems to take things in. Wow. More than you were expecting? It's beautiful. I want to sketch it. I want to... How old is this place? You know what history check? 17. This place is at least about five centuries old. You know there was some reconstruction also done on this place after the cataclysm, but as you're kind of like scanning the the horizon, you can't tell where any age begins or ends. Wow. We'll kind of just start like aimlessly looking around, just kind of walking. Well, I think we should walk along the marble path. Scriv is in love. <laughs> it's fresh ocean air. It's just super pretty. Everything also in terms of the atmosphere feels warm, but nowhere near uncomfortably so. The whole temperature is everything about it. Scriv, you and Belinda in particular, there's an almost unnatural sense about it. Can I look at the weather and just, is this temperature normal? Is the humidity fine? Is- Make a nature check. 21. Considering where you are, you know where you are on the map, uh, this should be a very cold environment. You look up at the sky, and it's a beautiful blue sky dotted with fluffy white clouds. Even the, like, the waves crashing below, like, there's a sound to it, but it's not overpowering. Everything seems like it's just right, just comfortable and peaceful enough that there's no way this can be all naturally done. It's an immaculate experience. Wait, can they control the weather? I would imagine it's not out of the realm of possibility for magic. But on this scale? Consistently? It depends on if they enchanted something. They've had a lot of time to develop the city. I guess I've studied ruins of that supposed to do that sort of thing, but just to see it... To see it... Working? Working, yes! Yeah. Just taking the whole thing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Okay, alright. The city obviously isn't going anywhere. Nope. (laughs) Okay. Well, it's just, I didn't know if we wanted to find a place to rest for today, and then we go to the temple, or how far the temple is. We should figure out where the temple is first. Still pretty early in the day. Well, are the guards still there? They're right there. Could you direct us to the temple district? You're searching for the, I assume, the dark ward, the shrine of Lydia. Yes. You'll be wanting, and he'll gesture ahead of you, and you'll follow him point as you notice... The main path you're walking on heads upwards to this central point that you notice peeking out from among the roofs, almost like a crystalline tower. But he'll gesture to kind of the right of that, and you'll notice several paths that lead lower, closer to the actual waterline, and several buildings along that area, also all kind of like open buildings. You notice there's no, like, doors visible that you can see here. You'll want to go down to the dock ward down there if... You are intending to visit the Shrine of Lydia. Well, thank you very much. Should be a lovely day to stroll down. It always is. Good day. Good day. You guys press on. You start to walk along the path. As you pass a point and suddenly you feel like this little gust against all of your clothing and looking around real quick, there is no mud on your boots anymore. 
There is no dirt on your clothes. What? Oh. It's just a breeze that passes through the city and just cleans everything? It seems to, like, come upwards from the ground. Is there anything different about, I guess, this, like, brick pattern? Make an investigation check. 19. Looking a bit closer, there is a slight discoloration in the marvel. Ever so slight. And the discolorations take the shape of various runes that are within the floor. Okay. Scrib, actually, my father has mentioned these. I kind of forgot. They're called cleansing stones, and they're placed at entrances to the city or special buildings to prepare everyone for entering. They like to keep things immaculate. So it's just a magical prestigitation. Okay. So I hadn't considered magic just being used broadly like this. I guess they pay attention to all the details. At one point, as you are staring up, by the way, you notice on some of the walkways higher up, someone just steps off, floats down to a lower walkway, lands, and then continues walking. Okay. Trying to piece things together like this would be difficult for me. If the city were in ruins, I would be very confused as to how people get from one place to another if I didn't take into account magic. Then it's a new experience for you. You get more information, and hopefully it helps improve your archaeology skills then. But what's wrong with stairs? They probably think they're tedious and require walking. They're not as elegant. They sometimes believe in form over function, and why not use magic to that end? Beauty is its own ideal that should be pursued for Salon and Elves. Perfect beauty, though. Yeah. You know, we didn't really ask Thoven what to expect, but going to the Temple of Ladir, you know, the god of magic in a city that is entirely driven by magic, is going to be, I hope, pretty amazing. You could say it's going to be magical. I hope. Good one, Akiva. I mean, we haven't really heard a lot of elves talking about their concern about Vladir vanishing, right? The elves seem to be doing just fine. They seem kind of like the type that even if they had those concerns, they would not voice them because they're better than that. So what? Just we're going to go to the temple business as usual. Everyone praying, everyone going through and acting as though their god wasn't missing. Sure. I don't know. I, it's a new experience for me, too. They, they could, like, throw wild parties or something every day. I have no idea. Has anybody else been to Solana? Nope. Looking forward to seeing how they take it. So we expect the unexpected. That should be our motto. So you guys are heading straight for the dock ward? Yeah. So you continue along, passing by all of these various buildings, some of them sharper edges, as if they're stone just shooting out from the cliff wall itself. Others much smoother form and detail, but everything just kind of a little too perfect in some ways. Everything is smooth. There is no sign of chip or chisel in anything. It's just formed. I shall ooh and ah on the way. <laughs> so there's no wear and tear at all? No sign that people actually live here? It seems too perfect. You notice people walking through the streets and little tiny bits of dust here and there, but... The stairs are all smooth. They don't have little grooves in them from feet treading on them. It doesn't feel lived in. No. So you press on towards the dock ward. As you kind of progress to this area, you notice fewer elves, more gnomes, a couple of humans, some dwarves. But one thing that really catches your attention as they are standing a good foot to foot and a half taller than most everyone else here are these well-dressed, almost like military-style clothing of blue and gold and red Massive humanoids, very large and heavy set, with a hippo head. What? And each of them seems to have on their person these beautiful-looking glass daggers on one side. And kind of strapped to their back, you notice a long, thin barrel with the curved handle and trigger of some sort of gun that seem to be walking amongst the city in pairs. Do I recognize what species of creatures this could be? Make an arcana check. Seven. Sixteen. Twenty-one. Sixteen. Akiva? That's a big ol' hippo person. Everyone else, <laughs> this is a race known as the Gif. So they tend to be very mercenary in their demeanor, and they're usually hired on as guards or general field work. You 
are aware that the gift tend to reside mostly in Solana and are used as muscle to the elves' more quick magic. However, they're very mechanically inclined, and they have a tremendous sense of duty and purpose. So if hired to do something, they will do it or die trying. So I'm not going to lie. When my dad told me about the gif, I thought he was just making up stories. My parents told me stories about them when I was growing up. Palm the gif. Your parents told you stories of gif? Well, more like my mom told me stories and then... My dad would just nod and say, yes, they were 100% true. And, well, I mean, I was young, and of course my parents would never lie to me. I'll just place a hand on script. Two seven-foot-tall gif walk right behind you. I nod. I'm just in a very strange place right now when it comes to determining truth and fiction from my parents, and it turns out the hippo folk were one of the things they were telling the truth about. You see a few gif glance over at you as he says hippo folk. They continue on their way, but they just glance over at you. So maybe we don't call them that. Okay. Gif. Let's head to the temple. I wonder if they can teach me something about how to use guns. I doubt walking up to them will result in you learning how to use their guns better. Well, you might, and then your life would be ended very shortly. Let's head to the temple. Let's go to the temple. Let's go to the temple. You guys head towards the Dark War where, as you are descending... With all the beautiful marble and all the design of everything, one building does stand out that seems to be made of the same dark stone as the cliff wall. It is fairly simple in design, and as you approach, you notice this building that seems to be kind of curved around the central area in the shape of a half moon as you're going down towards it. It looks very out of place compared to everything else around it, and as you get closer... You do see the imagery of the half moon kind of carved into the various walls of the structure, symbolizing the temple to Vladir. As you do approach, you see several elves just kind of stop by and do slight nods towards the shrine, but continue on their way. By the entrance, you notice a female elf with short auburn hair and brown eyes wearing a little bit dirtied robes out of place with everything else here as she kind of looks back and forth at the various people passing by the front of the shrine. As you get closer, she looks to you. Welcome to the shrine of Vladir. Are you guests within our city? Yes. Do you have a display to show the affinity and the balance of magic that Vladir has granted you? Fireworks! By the wand of pyrotechnics? By my illusions! Or what spell? Silent image. Pop, pop, pop. It goes off around you. The silent image spell. You have been blessed indeed. Magic is within you. Thank you. Feel free to enter at the blessings of Vladir. And we all walk in? We all walk in to a empty shrine room. Well, that answers that. I will say, as you initially enter, you notice the chamber itself is mostly oval-shaped. At the far end is a silver pedestal that rises up, holding a large crescent moon. There are soft glowing orbs all about the chamber. Plenty of seating, but no one inside. The elven woman is kind of like peeking in to see what you're up to, but overall also kind of looking around to see if anyone else is coming in. She's right at the entranceway. Okay, I'll actually go up to her really quickly. I'm sorry if this comes off as a bit offensive. First time in the city... Why don't you look as clean as everything else here? She looks at you, kind of a dirty look. First time in the city, I'm really sorry. It's probably sounding a lot more offensive than I really mean it to be. It seemed out of place. I am a devotee of Vladir. I do not care for my own physical appearance, but the beauty with which he has granted me the powers to create. This, I can probably tell you that's quite a good amount of beauty. I was just curious as to... Because it seems they keep everything very clean and starch here. Sorry, if I can interject, I believe my friend is just trying to inquire about how your appearance reflects your views. It is through my various forms of artwork, and she kind of gestures to one of the panels within the interior of the shrine, that I show worship of Vladir. My own appearance is not important for what Vladir wishes to accomplish. Vladir is a god of art? Of 
art, of beauty, of magic, of things that can be created. Good. To be frank, uh, fairly honest, I was just worried that you weren't treated as well as everything else around here. That, that was why. I'm, I'm sorry if I caused this alarm or anything. It was very nice art, though. Her eyes narrow at you. I would like to go and look at the murals. Some of them are mosaic, some of them are stained glass, some of them are painting. There are various forms of art along the walls, all displaying different stories. I will also, I, I don't know, what is an art appraisal check? <laughs> appraisal as in the value of it? Quality, aesthetics. Quality, I believe we've treated as a wisdom check. That is a six on my wisdom. Okay, I will get to you on that. But uh, Belinda, since he's just going and it's taking him some time to like look at the various artwork... I'm going to actually step between Akiva and this woman. Basically, like, completely trying to obscure Akiva. Sorry. I'm just going to say quickly telepathic. Nissa, can you disentangle Akiva, please? Sure. And I'm going to say to her, sorry, if I could introduce myself. Uh, my name is Belinda Walsingham, and I'm a follower of Adar. Adar? Ah, Dora Hill. Yeah, it's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. I'm sorry, we've come into your place of worship, and I'm sorry that we've tread on your toes. Didn't really mean to offend. I'm going to go put a hand on his arm. Um, let's go take a close look at the art. Come on, come over here. <laughs> so you, you mentioned that you are a follower of Adar. Yes. Well, that is a great boon, as our great Vladir studied and gained the knowledge of magic from the great Adar to then bring it down to us. And she gestures towards one of the images that Scriv is going towards, but it shows seeming image of Vladir teaching elves magic in order to benefit us. Yes, I know with everything that's been happening with the Gs, I'm sure it's affected how people worship here as well. To a degree, Vladir has granted us the blessings of magic. We thank him for this and go about our lives and by producing this artwork in the world to shape things, to change things that are into something better more beautiful. That is Vladir's gift to us. So why is it stuck here? If he's supposed to go and create, I mean, you have a beautiful city out there, why not have the murals out where anyone can see them? It seems like an offering. This is a focused offering to Vladir. If you do not appreciate what he has been given, you may feel free to leave at any point. At this point, I'll approach. I meant no offense, it was just a question of how worship... I, too, worship Adar, but at a different prerogative. I pull out my prayer wheel. I meditate in a different way compared to Belinda, who focuses on meditations and studying her own texts. So, given that you have a god of creation, I don't know whether to interpret the beauty of the city as one form of worship versus the art that is enshrined here. This is a focused representation to tell stories should those that wish to learn them can come and see the art, enjoy it. But the city itself, everything in here, is a display of the gift with which Vladir has given his truest followers. I think it's almost like why the Temple of Adar is almost a library. It's just kind of a form of worship. It's different, I guess. And that's why when I went to the Temple of Nezalem, it kind of seemed almost like a burial chamber. I want to be very bold, I suppose. I know we've just met, but if I could ask a question, you don't have to answer. Do you speak to Vladir? Does he respond to you? Roll persuasion. 22. She looks around at the interior of the structure, kind of with just a pleasant gaze, taking everything in for a moment. This shrine to Vladir... It is a place I have called home for many years now. There are magics on this place. This is, you know, the oldest building in the city. Unchanged as the rest of the city has been molded and shaped over time to what best helps us. But this has remained. And for years it is said that Vladir himself would come and visit the temple, take people away even to speak with him personally, but I have never been granted that boon, though I do try to help others reach such enlightenment with Vladir, that perhaps they might return with 
the gift of the art that Vladir has given all of us. You say it's been a long time. Centuries? Decades. Since anyone has disappeared to Vladir's embrace. Disappeared how? They pray. And she gestures to the silver shrine with the crescent moon on the top. They pray to his shrine. They focus their heart toward Vladir. And they seem to be taken away in a flash of light. Dorahil, was there someone who kept this temple before you? You say it's been decades. It seems like you've been here for many of them. Was there someone who served before your time when these visits were more common? There was. The visits were never extremely common. They were few and far between, usually centuries apart. But there was another priestess before me. She has gone off since then to see where Vladir can take her. Quick telepathy to the group, Tony. Can I make an assumption? I guess something is a player, so can I, like... Yeah. I think I got the pieces. This is the oldest place in the city. This is how we get to the Temple of the Prime Gods. It's here. This is the teleportation spot? Or it's beneath here, and I can't tell if it's magical, or even there's a mechanical method for how someone might get there, because this woman doesn't know. If you keep on talking, I can rule out the mechanical bit, if Nissa's willing to help. I can try and look around for anything magical. So I'm going to go back since Scriv has had a little bit of an opportunity to look around with your six wisdom check from before. You had taken a pause to initially just like stop. So you only explored like half of the room in that time span. But the art is beautiful, impeccable. Like you see no smudging, like every piece fits perfectly. And there's something like even looking back at other artwork that you've seen, this is on a whole other level. It's beautiful. So, you guys have the telepathic conversation as Nissa, Akiva, and Scriv are kind of looking at the various artwork as well. What is your intention? Just to investigate kind of the area a little bit quietly? I'd like to particularly check out the shrine. I would like to subtly point out a couple of locations where there might be maybe a hidden switch. More recently, we've had a lot of experience with secret panels in desks and stuff. So maybe try and extrapolate it with a bonus action. Okay. So you're commenting and to Nissa as you're also inspecting the general area. So anybody who is investigating, go ahead. Nissa, you have advantage. That's going to take you guys a little bit of time as you're inspecting all this. So we'll get the checks from you in just a minute. So Belinda, so you're talking to her a little bit more. To be perfectly frank, as a follower of Adar, I've experienced a disconnection, you know, in the past period of time. And I'm looking for answers on what might have happened. So it's a big reason we've come here to see if there's anything we could find out about what might have happened or if there's any connection we're missing. Strange to come to the Temple of Vladir as a once devoted student of Adar, I understand, but going to a place more like Halimian, where there are more temples to Adar and the various other deities, and yet you come to Ashmalin. A friend of mine mentioned this place and said I should come here. Oh, who is this friend? Perhaps I have met them. Do you know Thoven? Well, he has not been back here for many, many years, but yes, I know Thoven and the Arbor Shades. What's that relationship like for you, then? I know he's not close with many people, so... He does not come to visit, as he is not very close with his family. Sorry, do you know more about the Arbor Shades? It's not far from Ashmalin, but there's Arbor Shade Manor. Oh, so it's just outside of town. I honestly did not realize that. I haven't ruled out going to Halimian, but I thought I'd start here first because of the teleportation circle. There are teleportation circles in every Solanin city, but of course. We don't have that in the Vrimra Empire. It's a security risk. Well, we have many methods to inhibit those powerful enough to utilize our teleportation circles and stop them. I know the Vremer Empire had many issues with portals opening in their very city with the Darakul attack. That is not a problem for us. We were not attacked by the Darakul. Yes, this is true, and your civilization has had a lot more time to perfect your magics. The Empire is still relatively young, and yet well established. They are. They are trying to spread their reach much farther, and I don't talk politics much, but there are definitely seem to be trying to stretch themselves 
hopefully not beyond their means. No, they're just trying to bring opportunity to those who have none. Opportunity or control? What are you trying to say? Apologies. Most people of the Fremer Empire find our ways of life disconcerting. I simply find them to be different. You have a different culture than we do. You have a different story. We have our established borders, and we don't usually understand why there's such a hurry to expand them. Not everyone lives for centuries. Suppose that's true. You do not see the world in the same way. So, investigation checks. 17. 16. 19. As you guys are exploring the room, searching for everything, Nissa, with a little bit of Scriff's help as he's commenting on potential places where a switch might be hidden or like little symbols might be like hiding upon the pedestal. The exterior of the room you kind of see is just imagery and it's very well done, but overall just mosaics and paintings and all of that. On the shrine, as you're looking it over, you notice as Scriv heads towards the back wall of the room, you swear there is a slight glow on the crescent moon. And following it along, you kind of search the general area and notice on the ground, where you swear it wasn't there before. Scriv, you kind of meet her at the same point as you're exploring. You see four symbols. An upside-down pyramid, a disc, a scroll, and almost what appears like two eyes. All kind of in this boxed space. About halfway between where the shrine is and the wall is. And a slightly odd thing. Actually, all three of you notice this as Akiva eventually you kind of catch up with them and see them all focused on the floor. As Griff got closer to the pedestal and the shrine itself of the Crescent Moon, it glowed slightly more. It's a hint of a glow that you're barely noticing. If I walk closer, does the same thing happen? No. I'm talking to the lady about politics where there's a lull. I'll just telepathically checking it. <laughs> there's these symbols here. The shrine is reacting to Scriv. It glows when Scriv gets near. Okay. So the symbols are on the ground. The symbols are on the ground. It's literally halfway between where the actual crescent moon is and the back wall of the shrine. The back wall depicting Vladir coming down and assisting. Literally, it looks like he's descending from a beam of light, his feet hovering above the ground where other elven figures seem to be battling much larger figures. Scriv, you can take a guess that maybe this is elves fighting giants. Okay. I'll touch the shrine. Nothing happens. Okay. Not dead. That's good. That's a good start. There are symbols. Uh, down arrow, a disc, a scroll, and two eyes? So the symbols of the prime gods? That's what... Okay, yeah. So, Belinda, as a slight note, that's not the symbols completely normally associated with them. The inverted pyramid normally had a chain around it. Oh, sorry. And I'll be like, uh, if you just say it's a very pure, that sounds like an unchained Archon symbol. Yes. The disc, it would normally be a dark purple disc, symbolizing Sikton. The scroll, Adar. Obviously. And the two eyes are normally, have also a depiction of like little stars around them. This one does not, but that is Serdea. Okay, so Prime Gods, good start. Probably confirms your theory that this is the place. I mean, did we doubt? <laughs> okay, then the only question is how do we get below? Unless we're moving the shrine because it's hiding a secret door or something, but I didn't see anything. What am I doing with this woman? We're now getting into a weird political conversation. I can continue it, but I'm not enjoying it. So do I continue distracting her? Are you going to keep investigating? If you could just buy a couple more minutes of time, maybe Nissa and Akiva can figure out if there's something magical, a teleportation circle or something. Sure. Or could you just try praying to Vladir? Oh, really? I don't see why not. Let me try praying behind the altar in the middle of the four symbols first. You're kneeling in the middle of the symbols. I will pray to Vladir first. Vladir, please show the way. You pray to Vladir? Nothing happens. Adar, if you are also listening, please reveal the way, as Vladir is proving to be a little bit more difficult. You pray to Adar? Roll intelligence for me. It is a crit fail of a three. Just silence. 
Scrib, did you actually touch the symbols of the Primer God? No. So while I'm still knelt in the middle of the circle, I'll reach out and I'll touch the symbol of Adar. Okay. Make an intelligence saving throw. 21. Scriv, your mind flashes with words and you're not sure how they got there. And there's a brief, tiny, sharp pain through your head. You take two points of psychic damage. The words come in your mind as, as chaos came, law secured it. As good flourished, evil attempted to destroy it. I have an idea now. I will touch the symbol of Archon, and then touch the symbol of Adar, and then I'll touch the symbol of Serdea, and then I'll touch the symbol of Sikton. Akiva and Nissa, are you guys still next to Scriv? No. Yeah. yeah. So, as this is building up to what they're doing. Yeah, I'm going to try to be super nice. I'm going to kill her with kindness. I'm just really enjoying the beauty of your city. It's nice to see something that's beauty for its own sake, without function or purpose. She'll seem to ease off a little bit. And I see you work in many mediums. I do. We've had other acolytes in the past that helped to contribute over time, keeping the form of the shrine the same overall, but putting our own takes on the beauty of everything here. It's quite elegant. Thank you. I only wish we could find some answers about what's happening. There is a flash of light at the back of the shrine. Belinda, you look back and your party is gone. Cool. Just, uh, I have not... Dora Hill's speechless. Well, it's the thing you hoped for has come to pass. I am glad that there are some who are still called to Vladir. And she kind of like bows her head in prayer. I'm going to put my head on her shoulder and say, that's very sweet, but none of my party were followers of Vladir. There's something more obvious at play. Let me go over to where they were standing. She'll stare quizzically at you. A little like... How could you not say this is Vladir type of attitude coming from I'm bringing her, her with me. Over. Okay. So she will walk over with you. These symbols, what do you know about them? So as you walk over, Belinda, you don't see anything right away. But as you get close to the shrine, the shrine also begins to glow, but brighter. And the symbols are much more clear. Interesting. I have never seen this before. I've been at the shrine. I have been at the feet for... Decades. I have never seen this before. I don't know quite what it means either, but it's obviously important. These are the symbols of the prime gods, are they not? Here on the ground? I suppose when they were prime gods. The difference is, though, there's no chain. There's no color. There's... You've never seen these? Never. But they're here. They're not normally... Well, this is obviously a dar, and I'll, I'll place my hand on the Adar symbol. Okay, as you do, you get the words in your mind. Can I intuit the uh, pattern? You can. Say, why don't you take my hand, and then I will touch the symbols in the order following the, the words of Adar. So, the inverted pyramid, the blank scroll, the two eyes, and the disc. And you have a flash of light. So... From your guys' perspective, as Scriv touches the last symbol, there is a flash of light around you, and you feel a somewhat familiar sensation of being stretched at great speed, and then reorient yourself. Oh man, are we back in Orenthal again? No, you're in a completely enclosed, pitch black room. Goggles of night. For you, Scriv, darkness. And you quickly lower the goggles, as all of you are now able to see you notice a circular chamber you stand in the middle of. Directly in front of you is a stone door with each of the symbols of the prime gods on them. You notice at four points in the room, two on either side of this central doorway, and then two basically at you know directly across from them, you notice a set of stairs heading up about 10 feet to a small platform. And each of these stairs has its own door. And a quick inspection shows you each door has one of the symbols of the Prime Gods. It worked! Yeah. We kind of left Belinda, though. It, she'll figure it out. When you touch the wrong symbol, it gives you a me Right, the message! As chaos came, law secured it. As good flourished, evil attempted to destroy it. 
The symbol also zapped me, but I'd, I'm sure she'll figure it out. Yeah. I think it would probably be a good idea for us to wait before we continue on, so that, you know, if we get into any trouble, we have all of us here, instead of one of us, and then the three of us are lying dead in another room somewhere. Okay. I still want to go up and see the doors, though. Yeah. Say, we, we should not leave the room or touch anything. Not yet. Let's wait for Belinda. At that moment, Belinda, you find yourself with your party. See, I told you she'd figure it out. Who, Dora Hill is mouth open, staring at everything around her. Hi, guys. What I miss. And that is where we're going to leave this episode for today. Thank you all for listening. Please share this with your friends and follow us on Twitter at Rules As Written or check out our website, dndraw.com. And feel free to email any questions to the DM at dm at dndraw.com. Also, subscribe and leave us a review or comment anywhere podcasts are found. And please check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash dndraw. And remember, always make good decisions.